Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent. Edge. Let's do that again. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're back at the meta test. We're going to take a, one of the meta snapshot decks from the Elder Blood snapshot for a little spin and today we're going to be looking at one of the tier 3 decks, the Koshche Thrive deck. So you can check out the entire snapshot on the Team Elderblood website. The link is right down here in the description. And today we're going to be looking at this Force of Nature deck. So mainly focusing on the Koshche card, the new Koshche card that was introduced in the way of the Witcher. So how this deck mostly works is that you're going to be working around uh, Thrive, trying to build up in the first round, and then in the second round, you wanna end off with Koshche, hopefully twice using Kayanti, and then just build up those Thrive units that should be filling your entire field. So let's go through the cards just really quickly from the bottom to the top, so you know what's in this deck. And at the bottom, of course, we're looking at a few Thrive units. So the Bruxa, Tree Power, Thrive, and gives two bleeding to an enemy unit. And we have a few just high-powered units on the four provision side, so two Noon Raids, two NL Conquerors, because, of course, this is a Devotion deck, so keep that in mind, so there's no neutral cards in here. And then, of course, the non-to-be-omissed Andrega Larvas. The Andrega Larvas, you can find those in basically every monster deck. So, uh, Thrive, one power, two armor, and he spawns a copy of himself once you play him. So you get two of those in one go. Very, very high potential. Um, then, of course, the Wild Hunt Riders, four power, but deploy, you summon all the copies from your deck if you have dominance, which you should have with this deck. Two Wild Hunt Bruisers who allow you to move an enemy unit to another row and damage them by two if you move them to a row with Frost. That's going to happen less in this deck because you only have one uh, Frost card in here, but uh, it is definitely still possible. But moving a card from another row to the other row might be very useful as well. And then another seven power card just to get that tribe going with the Kikimore Worker. Then we're getting into the golds. The beast is obviously one of the better cards in Monster 7 provision. Starts at 4 power, but if it's not the highest unit on the battlefield, it boosts himself by 2 at the end of every one of your turns. Then the only bit of removal in this deck with Alas Trigga, allowing you to do 4 damage if you have dominance, otherwise you only can do 2. So you should be getting 9 points out of this one as well. Then Gael's, um, very important card to note here, so the tutor for the Wild Hunt special cards, there are only two Wild Hunt special cards in this deck, so if you have already uh, Artgate or Nagelfar in your hand, try to not get Gael's in your hand as well, because if you pull another card, you might as well brick uh, Gael's here. Um, so just keep that in mind. The Winter Queen, Thrive, and if you have Devotion, and we have Devotion, so she has Thrive, and if you have two rows of frost on your opponent's side by the end of your turn she will be automatically pulled from your hand so another card you need to pay attention to during the mulligan phase that you don't have that card in your hand so if you don't have it in your hand anymore uh, yet and you pull another card just be careful that you don't pull her if it's your last mulligan that you can do so probably best to not mulligan a card at that point then, of course, we're looking at some more high-powered units. Goliath, just very useful as a 10-power card. Ozreal, likewise, you can consume a unit from your graveyard or your opponents to just boost that up to a very, very high power. Garanti, as we said, is mostly going to be used to copy the Kostje, so we can uh, just play that awesome card twice. Our gate puts frost on both your enemy uh, units, well not your enemy units, but your enemy rows for three turns. You can use that again since it's an echo card. Nagalfar is another tutor, so you look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one and place the other on top. Um, so all very handy to get Koshche if you haven't have it, if you don't have it yet, or push uh, pull Karanti from the deck if you don't have him yet, but you do have Koshche in your hand. Then Koshche itself, um, very important to note. It only works at Adrenaline 4, so you can have 5 cards in your hand and then play Garanti or Koshche and you will start triggering the better 
ability of Corsair and you should only play him at that point so but if you don't do that the this unit has Thrive and whenever Thrive is triggered you spawn a drone on this row if you have Adrenaline 4 it is an Andrega Larva instead so you have another Thrive unit in one go if you play Corsair with Caranti you will trigger the Thrive in immediately giving you that extra um, Andrega Larva in one go so it is limiting in the fact that you need to play this by the end of the round but even without that it just has a lot of point potential if your opponent does not answer this correctly um, aside from cost share we also have wagon of course the 13 power massive worm that you can play uh, but of course with the downside that it applies armor to itself based to of on the number of cards that you have in your hand and if this unit does not have any armor it will destroy itself so it's kind of easy to be removed by your opponent but even if it's removed you have that card in your graveyard to then consume it with all swell so very very powerful indeed and then Oberon is also in this deck mainly because it could allow you to trigger the cost drives twice so if you play Oberon and then pull something like the Anal Conqueror which has seven power you actually trigger that drive twice which could be doubled up again if you have two cost chase. So very, very powerful indeed. So the only change that I made is that instead of going with tactical advantage, I went with crystal skills since there's so many uh, locks and uh, poisons on the, well, in Nilfgaard in the meta right now. Uh, and then of course, Force of Nature plays the Woodland Spirit, which is another nine power unit. So just very handy to play that drive. Um, you're going to be mainly using the Woodland Spirit right after you've played your second cost chain or your, your only one if you only have one, um, just to trigger that drive immediately. So let's look at this deck in action in an example match. Now we're actually facing monsters with overwhelming hunger, so this might actually be just a Vi deck. If it is this Vi that we're probably gon gonna lose against this, but yeah, so... We're starting with the hand that I wanted to show you off. So this is not something that you want to see. We don't want to see Gels, uh, Artgate, and Nagelfar in your hand. So let's get rid of uh, Nagelfar for now. We got a lot of our good cards here. I'm going to get rid of one of the Andrega Larva. We get a Noon Raid. Um, I don't want a Mulligan again. Because if I get another Rider, then we're boned there. So I think we're pretty good over here. So let's do that. So... First things first, we don't have Garanti, we don't have Kosh Chase, so we're going to have to be careful about that. We can pull one of those with the Knuckle Fire, but right now we're going to have to slowly build up. We're going to start with the Andrega Larva and just get going with the, the classic monster opening. So just for shits and giggles, I actually called this deck the Trivial Pursuit deck, uh, just because I added an H after the T, and it sounds like Thrive at that point. So uh, just just pretty funny there. Um, let's bleed one of those um, riders and then we can either way we can get the dominance so we can get our riders out as well so either I use the crystal skull on one of the Andrega larva to get on top or we do something else so there we go we get another Andrega larva on our opponent's side seems like we're using similar cards um, but that allows us to just use the riders as is because we have dominance with those four points so we get ding ding and we get those on the field. We could use the Crystal Skull right now, but I think I'm gonna hold off just a little bit. We might wanna use that to get the Dominance back if we don't get it in one go. We get more Andrega Larvas. Not that much of a problem, I think. Let's um, start bleeding those a little bit. So let's put our gate on there with the Frost. We get the Winter Queen out of our deck. And that's another little bit of thinning. So basically, with our play, current play right now, we thinned our deck twice already with the Riders and then the Winter Queen. Then we get a hybrid. So we're getting very low plays here. Um, doesn't seem like we're going to have to worry too much. Um, let's follow along and just play low provision cards that trigger our tribes. And even without the Crystal Skull, we are doing really, really well for ourselves. Uh, mainly because we also have four four uh, Thrive units there. So then we get a Slizzard. Interesting. Slizzard on the field. I'm gonna play a Weiger now. Because Weiger, of course, is a card that we want to get later on as well. So let's put the Crystal Skull on the Noon Raid. 
And that should give us a nice place to end it off at uh, for this round, because we get two hits on the Frost again. We get a little bit unlucky there. Um, but this might very well be a Vi deck. Haven't seen too much of it just yet. Um... I'm actually going to pass now. We're equal on cards. But our opponent needs to do... That is... 22 points in one card. I do not see them do that. Without actually overspending. So I think we're actually pretty good here. The only thing that we really need to take care of here is that we need to... Um, what's that? That's Iwara Quax. Okay. Oh no, that's going to pull cost chain. Damn it. Okay. There goes our best card. Um, not too much of a problem because they did bone themselves here. I don't know what the idea was. And <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's. Uh, I'm going to keep this one in the video. You'll, yeah, you just saw it. But that was just a way of overplaying your opponent. That was a Vidak that just completely um, fucked itself over. So uh, next one. And uh, next up, we're facing Northern Realms. That's actually a very interesting matchup. Because um, the way you want to deal with that is by trying to just force him into an early pass. Although we are on blue coin. Um, let's get rid of the Broxa, because we don't want to have two of those. We could use the Bruiser to move one of the Archers. Um, maybe get rid of the Noon Raid. We still have another Mulligan. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. That is actually pretty good. We want to have something else. The Conqueror could actually go. We have Gels and Art Gate, so we need to be careful. Um, no, I'm not going to risk it. So let's just end it off there. And then, of course, we start with the Andrega Larva. And then the Broxa, and then we start hitting those bigger cards. Again, we don't see Garantir or Koshche, so that is, once again, really annoying. Because I really want to show this off, but we're not getting the chance here. And then we get Forbidden Magic, of course, to get that uh, get Wenny Revenant on the field. Uh, they put, yeah, so that's random. They don't, they can't really control that. So let's put, um, actually that Bleeding is going to take out the Archer right now. Interesting. So I think I might as well go a bit more aggressively and play Weiger now. That's going to Give him seven armor, yeah, seven armor, and a very big target, so not something that they can just easily take out with a Kedwenny Revenant. They could probably take out one of the Larva. Um, no, they're going to win with Rat of its Royal Guards. Okay, that means... Oh, no, they get the Zeal, okay. They get the Zeal just to protect the Archer, okay. That's fine. I'm going to now play the Art Gate, because that's going to remove the armor on the um the archer and they're not gonna get charges from that anymore i'm also gonna put the crystal skull on no i'm not gonna put the crystal skull on one of the larva just yet we're gonna lose one anyway i'm assuming um and we get so that's one two three that's the wrong one or do they have another forbidden magic ready is that archer is gonna go well, it's not useful anymore, at least. So that's Ronvit. Okay. That's a weird combo there. But let's put the Beast on the field. And then let's put the Crystal Skull on the Andrega Larva. So that's going to put most of those out of reach of the Kedweni Revenant. And the Beast is just going to keep boosting itself. If they don't pass right now, I am going to. Opponent seems to be having some connection issues. Uh, we got a pass. Okay. That was to be expected. They're down on their luck. So uh, we're going to pass as well. So that's the first round. Against Northern Realms, it usually works, especially against a mobilization deck like that one. It really helps if you're aggressive. Um, because they will never be able to reach that high of a point potential in such a short amount of time. Um, we still have eight cards, right? So I could actually pull the riders we get Koshche, which is really good um i'm gonna just mulligan art gate and then mulligan the second rider okay that's good so i'm gonna do some tinning on my own deck so let's just put the riders out there and then just 
boss. I'm actually wondering if I should push. I don't have... I don't have Karantir yet. I could probably pull him with Nagelfar. But... Yeah, we're gonna hold off. Our hand is pretty good. But not perfect as I would have liked it. Um, and this way we're gonna have lost say as well. So there's not gonna be one last final big hit on something that we really want to save. So if we can get Karantir, I can actually show off. Because that's mainly what I'm trying to do here. I want to show off the Karantir and Kosche combo. Because it's uh, really cool to see your field getting filled like that. But especially against Arches and Revenants like this deck, you want to try and stay pretty high so they don't have a lot of one power units that they can take out. Um, this time I think the Broxa might actually go. We get another Kikimori Worker. Is there a risk for me? No, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it, so no. It is annoying. So now I'm going to have to choose between Art Gate or um, Karantir. Can I even get Garantir? Guaranteed. No. It's not a guarantee. Oh, it is a guarantee. It is a guarantee. So, of course, we get a, an armored up Rudanian Archer. Which means there's another one in their deck. Uh, but nevertheless, we still need to start slow, as we always do. Get those uh, larvas out. And that probably means we're going to lose one again. But I'm really hesitating whether it's worth it to go for Karantir now or I should go for Artgate. Because uh, I'm guaranteed to pull Karantir now. We get Amphibious Assaults, but that's a bit too late of course. But Amphibious Assault is always a good play. And now we get the Revenant, okay. That is actually fine. I might as well. I think it's gonna be better if we do our gates. Just so we can get. Although we can just use the bruises to move guards to the other side regardless. And play Nagelfar. Yeah, I'm gonna play Nagelfar. I, I wanted to show that combo, even though it might actually cost me the game. Um, let's move that archer to the other row. And there we go. And oh, what? Oh, come on. Oh, that is, ah, oh, that is annoying. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a, a normal forfeit because normally you get the connection loss pop up and then they forfeit after a while. But now that was just completely gone. God damn it. Okay, I'll try this one more time. And otherwise this is going to have to be the video. You know what to do. It's just annoying that I really didn't get a chance to show it. So I've been really lucky slash unlucky now. Uh, we get Imposter, which shouldn't be impossible. I've seen a lot of Imposter Assimilate decks. Uh, might actually do another video on one of those decks because it's really cool. Um, but right now we have Gels and Nagelfar. We have... We don't have Karanti or Koshche again. Let's get rid of one of the Noon Raids. The second Rider is also useless. And now we get Alastriga. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the Winter Queen, and now we get a Conqueror. Ooh, that is a, an interesting combination of cards there. That is annoying. Um, I'm gonna just start with the Riders, because I don't really have any of my normal starting cards. This might actually mean a pretty early pass. Because um, we still have... we have Gals. We could... Uh, start frosting the other side of the board. No door is oh, it's actually a... Ooh. It's gonna be a fill guard deck. Because they're gonna try and put that in our deck. I don't really want that in my deck. So I might as well delete it now because I don't want to have those extra cards in my deck. If I can tin as much as possible, this is gonna be a pretty good play. Um, do I actually have... No, wait. Let's just put the um, Bleeding on Roach first. At least we get a Tribe unit on there and then we can use Alda to uh, take out that Infiltrator. And now we get Amnesty. Okay, we're gonna get seized here. Uh, it's probably gonna be... It's not a Devotion deck, so they don't boost it in one go. Um. Yeah, I think my play remains the same then. Uh, I'll play Alda to get rid of that Infiltrator. Because I don't want to really see that in my deck. It's not something I can use, so let's just get rid of that. 
We're almost to seven cards, so after the next one, we'll probably see one of those. Um, is it no Viper Witchers? Those uh, Viper Witchers, the the tracking dudes. And then uh, we get the Guardian on top of our deck, which is also very annoying. Might as well use the um, the Frosts now. So our gate on the field, giving us a bit of tempo. And getting the Winter Queen out of our deck, of course. And then we get another Infiltrator. I always find a way in. Which is fine, I guess. I think they're underplaying here just to try and get me to... ...waste some of my cards. But I still have a few low provision bronzes, which are still gonna be playing for 7 and 6. Uh, let's put the Crystal Skull on Gals. I don't want to play Beast. Um, I don't want to play Beast, and if I can push... I'm gonna try and push. I think they made a mistake. Because next up is gonna be four more points for me. Of course they wanna push this as long as possible and I don't wanna go into a long round, um, round three. So I do wanna actually take that first round if I can. So let's just put... Yeah, let's just put the beast down now. That's gonna at least be some passive boosting. And I can actually compete with that by putting extra cards on the field. So we get a damage and a banish on the riders, obviously. Um, I'm gonna play the Conqueror. Countless others. And I'm just gonna push. Because the last card I'm gonna play is Goliath. That's gonna be 10, 11, and then another two on the beast is 13 points. I don't see them crossing that. So after that, I'm gonna pass in the hopes that I at least win that first round. We get Fion, that's another defender. Or do I actually pass now? So the defender is going to be 7 points. Um, but the beast now doesn't have a higher target. So yeah, I'm going to put Goliath on there. And if they still continue to push. I'm actually going to try. They could actually go for Imposter and double play Imposter. If they have um, Damien. This is interesting. Because they keep pushing because they want to have last say. Ah, there we go. There goes the beast. That is the leader ability gone. But we could get... Oh, we get Colgrim now. Damn you all. Why would I kill a child? Um... That is 16 points behind. They're gonna get... 5 more... If they pass, so that's not enough. Puts them up to 44. That's 11 points behind, so they still need to do 12. Golgrim is going to go 3 again, so they need to play 9 points. I don't see them playing 9 points, because even with uh, Leto Kingslayer, no, that's going to be enough. If they play Leto Kingslayer, that's going to be enough. But I don't see them doing that. Gorter Gavate, so that's the Viper Witcher... Don't play the Alchemist, right? Okay, the Viper Witcher Mentor, but the highest cost card in your opponent's deck instead. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be pretty high. But they did lose the leader ability, they did lose Colgrim. Um, and I don't. Is there a way for them to put. No, that's from my deck back into. That's interesting. Um, I could actually play the Guardian. In this, because I'm pretty sure they're going to pass, I would assume so. Let's get rid of the Rider, and we get the Infiltrator, of course. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to see that they pass. Although, if they want to use their Artifact, they're going to have to do something with it. Hmm. Nagelfar is also risky, because I can't play it without risking putting a, a very good card on top of my deck. And then they can pass that around. Okay, so that is good. I'm just going to play the Guardian now. So that is gone. So that's three points that I don't want to 
yeah, that I can't really do anything with, and it's gone. We didn't even lose points on that. Golgrim is gone. Can they play replay it with Resurrection? I've never actually seen that because nobody usually plays Golgrim that soon. Uh, that's Oberon, that's really good. Uh, moving a unit from one row to the other could actually be pretty powerful. Um, I could play the Noon Raid. Yeah, no. And Ring Larva is always better. But as we see again, there's no way for us to play the Karantir combo. Um, I'm actually going to check. Can you actually play Colgrim? Colgrim is 9, so you could resurrect him. Um, I do still have a bit of tinning in my deck as well. So let's play the Andrega Larva first. That's always a good start. So Colgrim could still come out, but Colgrim right now is 5 points each turn. And we're going to pull another card from our deck, so that's going to be 4 points each turn. We'll probably do some more fancy bullshit that adds cards to my deck, but... That's just turn each out, so that's a good start, I presume. Um, do I play Viger now? I could play Viger now. It's five, five armor. Yeah, I'm gonna play Viger now. Um, because the other ones I could use on targets. I might lose. I'm probably gonna lose. It to maybe even a coded weapons. A coded weapons would add another card to my deck, which would then not be ideal. Ah, but of course, if they can get an assassination out of there, they can kill the the wider one go. Or, okay, amnesty. That is amnesty. Okay. Um, so now we need to play the Kosche. Kosche is run and four, so let's play the Nagelfar and we get the Kosche over here. Um, we can put it over here and then play the Woodland Spirit right next to it. There we go. We get our Andrega Larva farm going. So Oberon is not going to trigger it twice. We're going to trigger it again, hopefully with Oberon. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to have to play the Frost as well. Imposter is gone, so that is good. And then we get Artorius. Artorius is not tinning, so they're not getting cards from their deck. They do get the Viper Witcher Adept back. Um, let's play Frost now. And hope, yeah, that's gonna hit Artorius first. And then we can actually put the Adept on the other row and kill it that way with uh, the Bruiser. And then we get the Viper Witcher, so again, adding cards on top of our deck. They're gonna resurrect Colgrim, aren't they? They're gonna resurrect Colgrim. Um, but Colgrim right now, so that's six points. I'm not gonna be able to destroy it anyway, so let's just continue what we were expecting to do. So that's Adept is dead. There we go. So that's at least one engine goal. Um, and next up is going to be Oberon. And then Osral is actually not going to go for the 14 points, unless they still have a way of killing Vigern. But I'm guessing it's going to be Kolgrim. Yeah, so now we're new on Kolgrim. Kolgrim is going to be 6 points per turn. I demand justice. A trial by ordeal. Uh, so let's play Oberon now. Do we get... We don't get a Conqueror, but we do get a Bruiser and we still have... Um, Frost on the field. So there we go. And that puts Golgrim back to three. And then we're gonna get Leto Kingslayer probably. I don't really have a way of getting rid of that, so it's annoying, but it's still the way that it's gonna happen. We get a Nautical Sergeant instead, so no Kingslayer. So that means that we might actually win this. So now we can actually. I could have actually played Ulzrel. That's actually a funny one. I could have actually played Osrael to consume the Colgrim that was in his uh, graveyard. Oh, that would have been so funny, but I I completely forgot about that. So uh, let's just play uh, Osrael now on our ranged row uh, and get the Goliath out of there. So that's going to be 10, 11. Yeah, okay. So that's only 10 points on the Kostche. 
But again, if you can play Karantir as well, it just snowballs really quickly. I don't see how they would be able to take this out. Uh, so they get another yeah, Bonnard. It's going to take out just a Vigan, I assume. I and that's just six points on Colgrim, so... I could have... That would have been the better play. So eating Colgrim in their graveyard with Ozreal would have been better. But uh, it, just a small tip for you guys. So that was the Koshche Drive deck. So I swear to you, stuff like this only happens when I'm recording. So we got a disconnect, a early forfeit, and then we finally won with the, the deck against, uh, well, Philgard, I like to call that. Um, but yeah, once again, this is the deck. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it, because I think we basically covered everything. I'm, I'm sad that we couldn't show off the Karanti and Koshche combo, but uh, still, it's a very strong deck, even if it's tier 3. As you saw, we won three times, even though that one time was because of a disconnect, but we clearly would have won otherwise. So... Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, check out the entire Team Elderblood snapshot in the link in the description. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwent Edge with the meta test. Um, and uh, once again, you can check out the decks in the snapshot of Team Elderblood in the description in the... Yeah, the link in the description. There we go. I got that out of my mouth. But thank you guys enormously for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye. Stay nutty.